Hello and good afternoon to everyone. Welcome to Unlocking the Power View. My name is Timothy White Sr. We are welcoming you to another live broadcast in the studio of KAZ Radio TV. And we have a couple guests with us we're going to talk about or talk with them in a few minutes. But before I do that, I want to talk about again briefly the book that we have just finished writing. It's called Lynching, Rope No Longer Required. Is We're finding some tremendous feedback and insight on the book. And we want you to be able to pick up the book. It's available at Amazon.com. It's called Lynching Rope No Longer Required. And in the book, we are detailing some of the losses by the police officers killing of black men, women, and children. So please, if you have a moment, get the book. Share the understanding. Share the knowledge with others so we can all be benefit and help one another. So with that... Now we're going to turn to the studio. We have a couple of young ladies within the studio today who are going to share some things with we talk about the topic today, healing for those who hurt. And we're going to talk about that, but it's also open for them to discuss some things that we talked about behind the scenes. They'll be sharing a little bit with us today. So with that, I'm going to introduce or let them introduce themselves and we'll go from there. So to my immediate left is... My name is Diane Pride Mays. Um, I am um, a retired federal employee after 43 years with the federal government. Um, I do a lot of community work. Uh, right now, I am working in the Ward 6 community office for Councilman Griffin um, in Cleveland. And um, I enjoy uh, doing things, helping the seniors and helping out in my community. Okay. That's a nice start. We will go now to your left. Okay. Hi, I'm Marilyn Burns. I um, am uh, retired as well. And I definitely do a lot of work in the community. I live in a uh, public housing. And anybody that knows about public housing, all the disparities that come along with it. Uh, I've always done community work. I've done it for about 40 years. So this is nothing new to me. Uh, I've always been for the underdog. So, you know, I came here to serve. So this is my purpose. And I just love what this conversation will be going today. Well, since you mentioned that word, uh, I want to reflect on that real quick because it's important. When you say underdog, what do you mean when you say underdog? Under, well, maybe I should use, you might understand better, un, the underserved, uh, uh, under-resourced communities, uh, the health disparities, the socioeconomic disparities. Uh, it's just a desert, and we don't even use the word food deserts anymore. We call it an apartheid, because within an apartheid, there are so many facets to it that can be picked apart. So when we described our, when we talk about our community, we talk about communities that have these high disparities, communities that have been redlined since the 1920s and 30s. We're living in 2021 right now. Uh, they said redlining was illegal since way back, but come on now. Those of you that can take the mask off your face, you can clearly see that redlining is still going on only under a different name. It's like giving a, putting a cover on a book, but when you start reading the pages, it's the same old, same old. So, Okay, so with that, we are saying the topic is helping those who hurt to heal. So there's a lot of hurt in our communities. Definitely. And so... What are some of the ways that we can help those who are hurting overcome just some of what you're talking about? And that's for both of you as you give an answer. How can we help them? Because that's a disparity. We know it's a reality. Yeah. Sure. That's their reality. So what do we do? What is it that we need to do to help offset that or to change that? You want to take that? <laughs> Okay. I think for me, and I do this all the time, so it's, we have to have a revival of the spirit. Our spirits are broken. You know, I am sit on a lot of boards, and, and, and they often want to talk about, oh, let's give them new housing. Oh, let's do this. Let's do that for the people. But have they ever talked about all of these things are good and well? But if we don't start to heal the spirit first, make someone feel good about themselves, then I think all these other things is, is worthless. You know, I so every day being in a community where I live at, I think it's vitally important that we encourage one another, that we show each other that we are loved, no matter what's happening in our lives. And I see a lot of things, trust and believe, that you are royalty, 
You are descendants of a king. That makes you royalty. You know, so greet each other with respect. We've lost respect. We've lost that. We've lost that in every life that's supposed to be in all of us. And it's so covered up with stuff that we no longer see that. We're so bombarded in the word hopelessness. So in that word hopelessness, I always look for that word hope. And we talk about hope. We try to take some of those stuff off of you every day. It's like peeling an onion, trying to get to the heart, the core, what we were meant to be. Royalty, a spirit, a living. He lives within us. So if we can revive a spirit in our community, a sense of uh, self-worth, a sense that you are somebody, you mean something to somebody, you love somebody, we love you, then that way we can start to heal our communities. That's the first step to take. And that's a big step. Everybody say, oh, yeah, that's a, it's not easy. It's not easy, especially when you're trying to gain trust of, com- of a community, trust of people who has been broken, beat down, trust that's going to take more than a Band-Aid or a tourniquet to fix. Our communities, our nation, our world, we're bleeding here. And it's going to take a whole lot more to fix. So there's a the question becomes then, I guess it's going to go to Miss Diane here now, because we have a lot of community, uh, people in the communities, whether mm-hmm. it's councilmen, mm-hmm. uh, the mayor, or whomever. Uh, how do we get them really involved? Because a number of times, we hear it all the time, well, they, they're involved, but they're, and I'm going to be honest, most of the time I see them only around for a photo opportunity. <laughs> What, what are we going to do about, about that? that? We, we need to get away. From, again, <laughs> when the community is hemorrhaging, yes, the community yes, is, yes, is hurting, yes. they, they need more than somebody to come along for a photo opportunity, stand next to them and say, hey, you know what? Yes. I, I feel you. Mm-hmm. I feel you. I, I understand what you're saying. I understand what you're going through. And yet they, they leave the inner city and, and they live in the suburbs mm-hmm. so they don't see it, nor do they really feel it. So, again, we're talking about helping those who hurt to heal. Mm-hmm. How can we help them? Mm-hmm. especially council people, mm-hmm. to understand they have to do more than show up for a photo opportunity for five minutes. Or when minutes election shake time comes along. Right. Or exactly, or right. for the election coming up, and mm-hmm. I need your vote. Mm-hmm. So what do we do? Now, I'm saying that because when I say we, I'm talking about community mm-hmm. we. Mm-hmm. What is it that we need to do to stop help stop the hemorrhaging? Well, you know, for me, you know, working for a con- uh, councilman, I find it depends on the individuals. You know, like in our area in Cleveland, we have 17 councilmen. And it just all depends on where their hearts are at. You know, some communities thrive more than others because of who, who's under the leadership, under the leadership that they're under. But I find in our ward, our councilman has a heart. She's her community is in, in our ward. This is his first year as being councilman. And they've just now, what, got the $35 million mm-hmm. uh, grant from uh, the federal government, which is something very prestigious uh, that she has worked on in order to get to help uh, improve her community. You know, they are now uh, getting ready. The money is to tear down mm-hmm. the old projects and to build new homes for them to be in to improve the community. So this is just one of the areas that's going on now to help. And that's because, too, under the leadership of a councilman, too, that cares, um, things are starting to roll along. And for leadership within the community, you know, people who have stepped up and want to help to change their, their community. Well, see, I like what you said, for those who care. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of individuals who hold offices. They don't care about the, the, the constituency. Right. Their concern is more about uh I'm going to use this office to reach the next office. Mm-hmm. It's a ju- it's a jumping stone or a hurdle for them to cross to get to the next one. And the community is the one that suffers. And we see all the hurt in the communities. We're driving down the street even mm-hmm. today. And I've often said it to my partners. I said, well, I, I'm so tired of these communities. You, you drive through and you see the garbage all over the place. Mm-hmm. You see the trash all over the place. And mm-hmm. if I went out, as a matter of fact, I had my son do it one time. Mm-hmm. He went out in the community he was in. He got some garbage bags. He even called the city and said, hey, can we get some garbage bags? Mm-hmm. And they wanted to know, what do you need garbage bags for? Mm-hmm. And when he got the garbage bags, he started to clean up. Then the council mm-hmm. people show up because they wanted that photo opportunity mm-hmm. to say, hey, you know what? I'm out here with them clean up the garbage. Mm-hmm. Where are you at every day of the week when the garbage is out exactly. there every day of the week? Exactly. This is your war. That's like saying you come into my house and my house is nasty. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Well, your ward, if your ward is nasty, mm-hmm. then I'm going to believe you have some nastiness in you because mm-hmm. you're not doing it. And it does not always take money to clean up the neighborhood. Right. It takes men power mm-hmm. and a mentality. Mm-hmm. Right. That's going back to what you were saying, Don, about caring. When right. we care, caring helps heal that hurt yes, yes. that these people in the communities are going through. And so when you're saying, yeah, we need to do this and we can do it, it's not hard when people get together and want to work together, is it? Right, mm-hmm. right. But that's that connectedness, that trust. You know what has happened, and and um, uh, this word has been coming up a lot lately uh, in my life and in the circle that I, uh, of people that I deal with. And we have lost empathy. Mm-hmm. We have lost empathy. And once again, I still have to go back to the word spirit. If that right spirit is not within you, if that good spirit is not within you to do the right thing and you don't have that empathetic piece about you, then it, it, it's just simply going to fall apart. Also, let me say this. Trust. People in, the, in our areas now and, and, and just everywhere, they don't trust anymore. Mm-hmm. It's because they've been beat down, bamboozled, lied to, and everything else that's mm-hmm. unconscionable has happened to them, who are they going to trust? They don't trust. So a trust builder is a very big fact. In the community where I live at now, I've been there 18 years. I'm still building trust. Why? Because the transition of people that's coming in and out of the community changes. Mm -hmm. I don't know you, but if you have built a network of trust among the people who have been there, and they say, well, who is that lady? Oh, her, that's Miss Marilyn. Look, Miss Marilyn, feed people. Miss Marilyn, get you what you need. Y'all need to know who Miss Marilyn is. Mm -hmm. So that's how I've gained my trust. And that takes a long time. I'm very empathetic. And empathy is a big thing in my life because I can truly say when I talk to these people where I live, and they tell me some of their horror stories. When I say, I know how you feel, I say it from a place because I've been there exactly myself. Well, see, what you were saying uh, is not often heard. Mm-hmm. What but you, it needs but to what be you're heard. doing mm-hmm. is the thing that most times we don't see. You're being visible. Mm-hmm. See, that you know, there's a lot of invisible. Yeah, Congress people, right. there are mm-hmm. a lot of invisible council people. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What we need is visibility. I can't trust you if I can't see you. This I can't trust you if I don't know you. This I can't trust true. you if I haven't talked to you and spent time with you. Right. And the only way for that to happen is you have to be visible. visible. And this is why the people that put you in office is the same damn ones that can vote you out. You have to understand your power as a people. Okay, you have to hold whoever you put in an office. They are accountable. They are accountable. And see, people are so afraid. I, I, you know, I hate to hear this all the time. Oh, I'm not going to vote. My vote don't matter. It don't matter who in there anyway. They ain't going to do the right thing. We do not know how much power we have as a people. We have to stand up and take control. And if you think that you're weak enough, get with some people in your neighborhood that are strong enough that can vote, that can that you can even just stand behind and say, yes, I'm here, even though I can't have the words to say, but here's my representative right here, and I'm here in support. It's strength in numbers. You know, I know we've had the Martin Luther Kings, the Malcolm X's, the Rosa Parks. We've had all of those that had a big following. We need to stand up as a community and take accountability of what we do. We cannot often sit back and let somebody else do it for us. Well, you know what? And so these, uh, let me yeah, just, just, and our council people, you're absolutely right. Because the first time election time come around and they say, oh, I'm so and so and so and so, I'm running for, where you been? I never seen you here. What's your name? What you do? I never seen you read a book to a kid, come down here, kiss some babies, do something, give out some food, something, I don't know who. Now, all of a sudden, I had to read, I read this young man. So he said, Miss Burns, he said, please just let me come down and talk to you. Just let me tell you my story. And I'm like, okay, well, make sure you don't come empty-handed. Bring some down here for these babies, you know. So you have to hold people accountable for what they do. You talk the talk, you have to walk that walk. You know, we hear that. All the time. You know, it it became a cliche at this point. You know, talk the talk, walk the walk, Mm -hmm. and so forth. Something you said to resonate it with me, and we have to uh, explore that a little bit. Mm -hmm. You mentioned uh, Martin Luther King Jr. They have a lot of civil rights movement, Mm -hmm. a lot of civil rights uh, activists, and so forth. We 
we don't mind quoting them or talking about them as if no one else can replace them or no one else can do what they have done. We need some Martin Luther Kings of the 21st yes, century. Yes, That's what's lacking. We don't see enough people right. standing up and standing out. We right. will. We like to go back to yeah. the 50s. We like yeah. to go back to the 40s. And we say, they did and they did. What about, uh, this is 2021. Yes. What about you? Yeah. Don't look for somebody else to do what God put in your heart to do. Right. See, what we're trying to look for and find is somebody to do for us what we should be doing for ourselves. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Right. A lot of times we are our biggest enemies. You know, I say that all that we get in our own way. You know, we uh, uh, I and I've started to say, look back at old records and something that keeps popping in my mind. And I'm going to just have to talk about it. The record by Michael Jackson. Let's start with the man in the mirror. Right. The man in the mirror. We each have to take a look at our own selves. And sometimes with the reflection that we see of ourselves, we don't like. You know, I, I like what you said because there's a lot of, uh, you know, you said records. A lot of young people don't know anything about a record. <laughs> so well, you have yeah, to say a CD. CD so yeah, something was, like that. That's right. my era. Excuse yeah, me, the records. Yeah. You know. But if you just go back, Michael Jackson, one of his records with the man in the mirror. And if you really listen to the words of what he's saying, mm -hmm. it rings so true. It rings so true that it even was true before he even made that record. Look at yourself first before you judge. When you point a finger at somebody, how many people? fingers are you pointing back at yourself we often sometimes are, oh, i don't like that person you know why you don't like that person because it's a reflection of something in you that you see in that person but you know what that goes back to what we're talking about today that's the person who's hurting right. yes hurting people yes. hurt people right. yes so when yes. we're hurting we tend to lash out at other, other people exactly. we don't want them to necessarily see us we want them to see something wrong in somebody else. So we'll argue with you and debate with you all day. It's nothing wrong with me, man. It's you. Right. Why are you that way? And going back yeah. to what you said about Michael Jackson's song, I'm looking at the man in the mirror. And I've said it before on the program. Most of the time we go to the mirror and if there's people in back of us, we're not looking at the person in the mirror. We're trying to look beyond yes, the yes. mirror to see who's looking. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so we can turn around and say, what are you looking at? <laughs> so the, the hurt continues and the healing is slow because we're not doing the things that are required of us. As mm -hmm. you mentioned, too, are we holding not only others accountable, but are we self-accountable? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing we have to look at. Mm -hmm. And uh, Diane, you say you work for the, the uh, government. No, not government. You work uh, for the federal. Yes, I work for the federal government. Okay. But, but while I was listening to you were talking, you know, in my job, I'm the community engagement specialist. Okay. You know, it's my title. But every day I, I talk with people. They call me up. You know, I deal with a lot of seniors. And they're hurting. You know, they're, they don't have relationships with their children, you know, with their grandchildren, they're, they're alone. And in fact, they call me up just to have someone to talk to. You know, I tell them all, just call me. You know, they call over an hour. They, they have my own personal cell phone. They call me at 8.30, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock at night, you know, when they feel like talking. And that's only because they don't have that that connection, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to talk about their feelings. And a lot of times they're telling me about, you know, things that when uh, that happened while they were raising their children, you know, the problems that they've had. And sometimes we can talk it over and they say, well, you know, that makes sense. You know, I'll give them a call tomorrow and and talk with them because sometimes mm -hmm. our own pride gets in the way mm -hmm. of us trying to connect mm -hmm. or re. Uh, kindle or relationship mm -hmm. that things have happened and with doing that that will help the hurt at least start off knowing that you are hurt there is a problem and this is something that I need to to address mm -hmm. and especially when they're at a point where they don't know how long they're going to be here you know when you start reaching a certain age you start thinking about you mm -hmm. know what hurt I've held this long a resentment towards someone else which you forget about even what you were, mm -hmm. you know, upset about, yeah. you know, at one point. Yeah. And some of them, they don't want to leave this earth holding and feeling okay. these, these hurt feelings. So, yeah, so I deal with people in that respect. And for me, I feel good that I'm, a, a, I don't know, a catalyst or mm -hmm. a, a person that they can at least talk to confidentially mm -hmm. without anyone knowing and open up their hearts and after they get through, you know, they normally tell me they really appreciate 
you know, what I've been able to do for them. Mm-hmm. And I'm surprised with it because I'm trying to figure out what did I do but just was just listening. Sometimes you just hit the nail on the head. Sometimes the only thing they want is somebody mm-hmm. to listen to them. Mm-hmm. They don't necessarily want us to have an answer. Right. But they just want to empty up. They just want to let some of those things out. And being there. And the other thing we have to consider, too, hurt does not happen only between nine and five. Right. Mm-hmm. See, that's what we look at. It. You know, nine to five, I, I have time for you between nine and five. But after hours, as you mentioned, right. phone calls are coming in eight, mm-hmm. nine, 10 o'clock at night. Weekends. They're hurting 24 mm-hmm. and weekend. They're hurting 24 mm-hmm. seven. Yes. What people are looking for is hope. They want mm-hmm. somebody to give them some semblance of hope. Mm-hmm. You are a liaison between God, the father mm-hmm. and the world. They don't see God, but they see us. Mm-hmm. Right. And since they see us, they're simply saying, Hey, can I, Marilyn, I know she says she's a believer. Mm-hmm. I want to see if she's walking the walk. Now the thing about walking the walk too, this is what we have to learn. People are hurting. As we said, people who hurt will hurt. Mm-hmm. Some of that hurt, they want to see how real you are, mm-hmm. how real we are. So they'll do things to mm-hmm. see what you are going to do, how you're going to either respond or react. Mm-hmm. And if they see us reacting, the reaction means, oh, but a response means, okay, let's talk about this thing. Mm-hmm. That's what they're looking for. Those who are hurting, many of them are simply saying, hey, I'm hurting, but can, can you listen to me for that moment? Can you mm-hmm. listen to me for 15 minutes, an hour? Mm-hmm. Or uh, uh, when you're talking, the last thing you want to do, when you somebody's coming to look for help from you, mm-hmm. the last thing you should be doing is this. Okay, yeah, you know, I understand exactly what you're talking about. And, Mm -hmm. yeah, I believe you, and we're going to do something about that. Mm -hmm, Uh, mm -hmm. What are you doing? You're watching the clock. Mm -hmm. You're not listening anymore. Mm -hmm, That person knows, looking at you, Mm -hmm. you you legitimately Mm -hmm. don't have time. What? Don't have time Mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. Hurting people are saying, please, do more than just have me in your room. Mm -hmm. Will you talk to me? Mm-hmm. Will you listen to me mm-hmm. or will you judge me? Right. So those who are listening, there's some people out here who are resentful mm-hmm. in the community because they're saying no one in the community cares. Mm-hmm. They're hateful. Mm-hmm. They're doing things because they said, hey, if you don't care about the community, why should I care about it? Mm-hmm. If you mm-hmm. accept garbage, I'm going to throw garbage at you then. Mm-hmm. Right. So with that being said, those who are hurting they're listening to us. They're hearing what you're saying. They're hearing what we're saying. So how do we get it off of the paper into the psyche? Changing the mindset. Oh, my gosh. You just asked a million-dollar question. I hear this question. How do you change the mindset of somebody? First of all, as I have to keep going back to, and I'm not going to leave it alone, you have to change the spirit in order to change the mindset. It starts with the spirit. If you are downtrodden, broken, you hurting, you're going to lash out. I don't care whatever kind of way it's it's, it's just going to lash out. But if I keep telling you and you keep beating me up every day, I love you. Okay. Okay. And they see that I'm not, I, will, I love you. You mean something to me. And if I keep telling you this and you, after a while, you you're going to start to believe what I'm telling you. Right. And the reason they're going to believe it is why? Because they're seeing that example. And it's consistent. Exactly. Faithfulness, right. commitment. Yes. Whenever I start, and this lady right here can tell you, I'm like a bulldog with a bone. <laughs> when I get committed to something, I'm not going to let it go until I finish it. If I truly believe, if I, I get up trying to be an exact, now mind you, I'm human, we all have faults. I'm still on the potter's wheel. I'm the first one to admit that. But I get up with encouragement because I armor up. I know I'm going to get some fiery dots. I know I got some haters. We all got some haters, you know, so that's, that's understandable. But if I can go out there and just a uh, model from our church was if I can help just one somebody along the way, then my living won't be in vain. I used to, when I first came to Woodhill Homes, the States, I used to have this mindset, oh my God, because I didn't know anything about public housing, you know. And when I saw the atrocities and the brokenness there, I immediately just wanted to like the mama with the ear, let me fix this mm-hmm, for mm-hmm. you. You know, and I had so much resentment. Who the heck is this lady coming in here? To... So I, I talked to a mentor friend of mine and he started laughing and I got angry and I'm like, this is not funny. I'm in tears, right? He said, Marilyn, you are not God. You cannot change the world. 
He said, if you want to know about this community, if you want to help, he said, start going back to school, start doing this. And I started that journey 18 years ago. I've come a long way. I've learned a whole lot. I've gained uh, a lot of insight. I've gained the trust uh, and of the community, you know, and it's all because of I was out there every day trying to make a difference in somebody's life. You need something? You want to go? What's the problem? I want to go to school. I just had this baby by so-and-so and so-and-so, and, and he's trying to stop me from going to school, and I need a babysitter. Give me the baby. How long are you going to be in school? Give me the diapers. Give me the milk. What the baby needs you go on to school. Uh, I want to do so-and-so. What, you need some bus fare? What is helping you? I'm trying to take these, peel these layers away. So you, these barriers, mm -hmm. so to speak. Excuses. To, to, mm -hmm. Excuses, whatever you want to give the mm -hmm. world. But, you know, if I can, and, and, and oftentimes it, it is a problem. I don't have, uh, people are embarrassed. The smallest things that we take for granted, and it broke my heart. When I heard somebody say, a kid say, that I miss in school and I, my mama be sending me to school, but I don't go to school because my clothes is dirty. Mm -hmm. Something we take for granted, we go wash our clothes before a kid to tell you, that's a big thing in somebody. Go, go, go to work. I don't have Miss Burns. Can you help me where I can get some clothes? I want to go on this interview. I don't have no clothes. Can you help me get a suit? I want to do so. I'll get out there and get it for you before the day is. Trust me. Trust me. And so these barriers we have to take away. You somebody, I'm not laughing at you. Hey, I know what it is. I've been there myself. It's not funny. That hurt is so hurt. It's so painful mm. that you don't want somebody else to hurt like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't. So to heal, and I'm healing too, because, you know, when you're, when you're a person out here trying to help somebody else heal, oftentimes you're picking at sores that you had yourself mm -hmm. and you're bleeding all over again along with their bleeding. So we have to be careful not to let ourselves, we are caught up, we are empathetic, but we have to let ourselves not get so close to it that we can no longer help that person. Mm -hmm. You know, giving a hand up and a hand out is two different things. You know, I'll get down in the muck and the mire with you. I truly will, and I truly have. But I am not going to let you get me stuck there. I will give you all the words and perils of wisdoms that I can. I'll give you all the love that I can at that particular time. But I'm going to have to get up and go. Okay? And hope that if you're not ready to make that move with me right now, it's okay. But I hope that I have left you with something that after a while you think about it, let me get up. Even if it's inch by inch by inch. Move out of from where you are, that darkness, into a, closer to a light. Well, we know, too, and it's, it's true. We can't, as you mentioned earlier, too, we try to fix everything. Mm -hmm. And we try to fix everybody. Mm -hmm. Everybody's not for you to fix. Right. And, you know, uh, you know. There comes a time when you have to pull your hands away yes. and walk away, and somebody else has to take that in, uh, under their mm -hmm. arms, under their wing, to do something for them. And there's nothing wrong with it. In order for us to help someone get clean, sometimes we have to get a little dirty. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's a natural thing to happen. Mm -hmm. So if we get dirty, we need to get cleaned up. Uh, none of us are perfect. I don't make excuses, though. I tell people, just because you're not perfect don't mean you shouldn't do right. Right. What we try to do is like justify that. the wrong. You know, oh, you know what? And we throw that up there in a hot second, don't we? Mm -hmm. Well, man, I never said I was perfect, did I? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That justified my Action. doing nothing yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. or doing the wrong thing. We have a conscious. And then we're going back to that spirituality. We have a consciousness mm -hmm. and a consciousness of God. And I always tell people, you have a God conscious. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't understand who he is, you have a God consciousness. Mm -hmm. He's linked to you. What you do is up to you, but you can't deny the fact that he's with you. Mm -hmm. And that's what we tend to do is when we mess up, we're like, oh, you know what? I didn't know better. Yes, you did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You knew better. You just chose not to do better. Yeah. So when instead of making excuses, we need to make adjustments. Mm -hmm. And the more adjustments we make, the better off we become as human beings. They're looking, again, those who are hurting which is all of us. Mm -hmm. right. Right. Everybody in this room is hurting. In mm -hmm. some way, in some mm -hmm. capacity, we're hurting. Mm -hmm. 
But the more we reach out to other people, we find we hurt less mm -hmm. because we are investing our time in somebody else rather than our misery. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. what yes. is that old saying? Misery loves, loves company. company. Yes. Right. Yes. And when we take away that miserable part, we find that we get better, don't we? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So as we're looking at the idea and the thing about hurting mm -hmm. and hurting people mm -hmm. can heal, Mm -hmm. But we have to give them a reason and a way to heal. Mm -hmm. We know the, the way that they should heal mm -hmm. by letting go of these things. Now, what's mm -hmm. the reason that mm -hmm. they should you look mm -hmm. for? Mm -hmm. What reason do we give mm -hmm. people to heal? You know, I listening to Marilyn and you're all talking, I, you know, I just want to mention, too, that not everybody that live in public housing are miserable, mm -hmm. have bad lives, mm -hmm. right. you know, are... Are, are are in bad situations. Mm -hmm. Basically, they're living there because they have low income. Mm -hmm. You know, they they have. There's a lot of them that have good family lives, absolutely structures and and whatever. And you know, and I you know have met. I you know, I've I've never lived in public housing or been on welfare, but I have had family that have, and they're all good people. It's just their mm -hmm. circumstances as mm -hmm. to why they're there. It's not necessarily you know everyone else's. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and when I, you know, I'm, Marilyn gives a lot of things down in her, her community and I go down there and I'm dealing with the children, you know, and and you see the delight in their eyes, mm -hmm. you know, the the excitement because they're excited to see someone, too, that's out of their environment. You know, someone that they can see that, you know, maybe this is someone that I can, you know, look up to or or maybe I mean, we have people that come down there, this business people who own businesses and they deal with the children. So at least you give them another way of seeing, you know, of seeing things. And and for me, you know, I when she was talking about being hurt. You know, I see some of the parents and it hurts my heart because some of them, they're, they're cussing at the children. You know, they're they're calling them all different types of names. And and my thing is that you're creating another generation mm -hmm. that's hurt, mm -hmm. that's going to hurt. And when they go to school, they're hurting mm -hmm. other children. You mm -hmm. know, they're becoming the bullies. Exactly. They're, you know, they're they're um, ashamed of, of certain things like she mentioned, mm -hmm. their clothes or there are certain things. But I find that when you talk with them. You know, they have ambitions. You mm -hmm. know, you ask children, you know, what do they want to do out of life? And and sometimes just that little, like Marilyn was saying, you know, that if you have that one to show some love to them, you know, even mm -hmm. attention, that's the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes just showing attention helps to heal someone just a little bit because it shows them that there's someone that really cares, yeah. you know, about me, that I even exist at this point in time that I'm, you know, with them, that they're spending that time. So, you know, for me, you know, I'm just really strong about, I know we have our older parts, a generation that have been through a lot and they have that hurt within them, but our young people now, you know, we need to try to figure out how to, you know, to put them on a different path, mm -hmm. you know, where they can grow up with not as many problems or as many uh, things that they have to work through, like you said, the muck and all this mm -hmm. other stuff to get to who they, you know, really want to be in life. And that's, that's kind of hard, but that's something that, you know, I'm passionate, you know, about. I, I love what you said, because that is true. There's not everybody in those environments right. are, are hardship cases, as right. you mentioned. Mm -hmm. they're, they're there because they can't afford to be somewhere else, but they're making the best of where they're at. Right. And one of the greatest things is when someone is struggling to see someone look like me who's come out of the muck, mm -hmm. who is crawling out of it, and they're getting cleaner mm -hmm. and cleaner by the day. They want to see that kind of example, mm -hmm. and they don't see that. And, and we've said it on this podcast before. So many of us particularly in the room here, mm -hmm. the majority of us in the room, mm -hmm. many of us grow old, but never grow up. Right. Yeah. And yeah. that's, what's missing for some of our young people, mm -hmm. that generational, if you want to call it a generational curse, that's mm -hmm. part of the curse. When yeah. I would simply say, Hey, you know what? I don't care how I inf infect that person. Right. Mm -hmm. I got mine, you know, I, I got mm -hmm. mine. I don't care about it. Mm -hmm. And our children ultimately become what collateral damage. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and when we're cursing them out, we say, well, you know, I'm just keeping it real. Mm. Is that keeping it real by damaging the child? Mm. That you're hurting the child, but you're justifying it by mm -hmm, simply saying, you know mm -hmm, what, mm -hmm. I, this is the way I came up. Yes, that's the way you came up. Mm -hmm. But you knew it wasn't right when you right. came up that right, way. Right, right. So you were hurting because, right. and, and understand something, people, we need to know that adults are just older children. Yeah. Right. 
Yeah. Right. We're older children. We still have attitudes, don't we? Yeah. Need those adjustments, don't we? Yeah. We have we have more expensive toys. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Our homes, our cars are more expensive toys. We have a lot of more money than when we were kids. Mm-hmm. And we have the same. If we, you, I think you mentioned it too, Diane. We have attitudes. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And when we have those attitudes, we perpetuate those attitudes by justifying those attitudes by who pushing it on our children. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Our children need to, when we went to the school, and my partners are here can verify that we went to school. When these young people, and we're in this elementary school, and they're talking, and I say, hey, this is the president of my company president like the president of the united states they mm-hmm. didn't know what that meant to mm-hmm. be a president of a company mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. a sales director what is a, a sales and marketing director what is that mm-hmm. see what they're not seeing is enough of us in places mm-hmm. like that giving them an example a living example mm-hmm. when a child calls you they're calling you because hey they're hurting or they need some help in something mm-hmm. right. and our, again i'm gonna say that do we go looking at the watch and say you know what come back later you know i'll put you i'll pencil you in mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. on my schedule when that child needs some clothes to go somewhere to be seen you mm-hmm. can't say well i'll pencil you in later mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and we're all retired Mm-hmm. So that means we do have some time on our hands, don't we? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's how you utilize. There that you go. Time. Mm-hmm. How do you let you know? And 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 it's so uh, everything that you're saying just resonates. And I do. And I didn't mean it for to come across that everybody that lives in public housing lives in a bad state. No, mm-hmm. you know a lot of famous people have come out of public housing. Absolutely. As we mm-hmm. all know the Stokes mm-hmm. brothers, mm-hmm. Per- perfect example. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? We we're, we're you know. And, and people often say, because uh, it's a family estate where I live, lots of kids, lots, oh my God, kids everywhere. And so, you know, I've often heard it said when these organizations or higher academia people come in and want to come and help our community, oh, the poor black people, this will help them. So, uh, you know. You, you faded they all always, this, man. Huh? <laughs> all purpose. Uh, uh, you know, I hear people say, oh, you know, oh, yeah, the kids are so resilient. I detest that. And let me tell you why. Because kids, you know, and as Diane stated, I hear these people cussing their kids out. First of all, the kids have become caregivers. And I say mm-hmm. that because mm-hmm. the mama has had how many babies and still got one and she's still young. She ain't even hit 30 yet. And so now she still want to kick it with her girlfriends mm-hmm. who ain't got no kids and go to the club. So, hey, you the oldest, you nine. So take all these four other mm-hmm. brothers and sisters. Now they ain't got a chance to be a kid because exactly. they want to go out and be a kid. So now they resentful. They hauling around kids that you should be because you want to go do your one, two, then nobody tell you have But you weren't looking for love in all the wrong places. That's another story. Mm-hmm. So now, you know, so now you cussing the kids out. The kids hear you. I, all I hear all day long is the kids cussing each other out. They can curse better than I can. And I've been mm, a long time. And I'm like, look at how old are you? And I'm like, oh my God. So these are some generational curses that come along with this. Mm-hmm. So did we have to check well, out because you mad and you done had all these babies first of all you thought the baby daddy loved you but then we all know that a man will tell you anything to get over and so anyway <laughs> I see the I'm men looking it, around right, keep it real keep it real let's keep it real here and so now you got a baby so now, oh, I thought he loved me. He gone to your girlfriend next door, you know. And so now the, it perpetrates one thing. And so now you got three babies. Well, now maybe a guy might accept one baby, you know. Now you got two. Okay, well, maybe one of them is his. Now all of a sudden you got three or four new babies. So now... So now, okay, so you mad, you young, you got all these babies, oh, nobody really. So you have low self-esteem because you sold yourself out. And I talk to a lot of young women, and this is usually the problem. The problem is I thought he loved me. I thought this. You know, well, where's the baby daddy? He in jail. You know, and it's the reality of life. Okay, I hear these stories every day. So what you, okay, so I don't go in, you know, and I hear these organizations come in, want to help. Mm, I think it's just grant money, but that's on my own opinion. And help the community. What do they need? First of all, you don't come down there with a bunch of surveys. Uh, the worst question I hate on a survey, and I'm quite sure you all have heard it before, where do you see yourself in five years? Five years? I can't see myself next to the next five minutes. You got a baby sitting on your lap. I come in there. Your hair ain't done. Baby crying. 
Diaper ain't been changed. You got these other babies running around. They not clean. Everybody hungry. You got a black eye. So I'm going to ask you where you see yourself in five years. I can't see myself past the next five minutes. Well, you see, we can't. And and what you're saying is true, too. We What we have <laughs> mm-hmm. is, and unfortunately, government is the one doing it. And I know I'm going to get in trouble saying that, but that's okay. Government likes to throw money at problems, think that solves the problem. Yes. We, more money we throw at it, mm-hmm. and the sooner they feel it will go good. away. It's a, pat, it's a check off mark because somebody said, you know, these different high up organizations, I'm not going to mention any names, but you know, and then I often say this I put this pledge out here one time because <laughs> I sit on a lot of boards, and I'm like, I get so sick of hearing this all the time. So, where does the money never trickles down to the community for the people that they're supposed to be helping? They give these surveys five years down the line. Well, what happened to this that you said was going to happen? I'm sitting there like, so I tell them all the time, don't bring another survey down here to the community. Then they want to throw these insulting $25 gift cards at you like, oh, yeah, they poor black people. They need it. Well, of course, yeah, I, anybody can use any money, right? But make it worth, don't, don't, I put the uh, thing out here, I say, you know, I invite any of you, and I mean these are big time people, to come out of your ivory towers. I'm willing to give up my apartment and share it with you for one month to actually see so you can see how these people live. You couldn't hear. It was so quiet. It was the loudest silence you ever heard in the world, right? So at the end of the meeting, this white guy walks up to me and said, Miss Marilyn, I'm going to tell you straight off. I ain't going to be able to do it. He said, because the first gunshot I hear, I'm going to be running to my car. I said, well, no, it's not for you because you probably hear that all times a day. It's just the reality of it is. I don't like the fact that we are we need to stop getting this grant money to be a checkoff to an organization, to an academic world, to, to so they could feel better. Come down and see. Diane has been many times, as she mentioned earlier. I've had people that uh, doctors come to these events, just to see, to interact with the kids. Doctors around trauma, case, you know, all these. Come see how we live. Come come to my house and see this. While you want to really talk about how much you care, can we volunteer? When you ask me, can you volunteer? I'm dead on you, like white on rice. But see, they won't volunteer. Volunteerism to them is a checkbook. Volunteering yeah, well, for you is I'm on grassroots. I'm on the streets. I'm doing something. And you mentioned earlier, and I just put this book up, book mm-hmm. I wrote, uh, choosing a mate over your child. We have <laughs> women, women who have put men before their children. Oh, yes. And they don't have a problem with doing that. Oh, and yes. And as you said earlier, they mistake sex for love. Yes. And we don't talk about it. We will eventually talk about that on the program. There's a difference between love and sex. Oh, yeah. And a lot of these girls, 18-year-old, 19-year-old, 20 years old have four and five babies as you're saying they they ready to hit the streets they really still want to party yes. hardy and do those things and and again it comes down to where's the young man and uh, is he accountable and responsible i know you picked on the guys you say you know how guys are there, there's there's some responsible guys too yeah. but we have we have to look at and see what is going on what's the dynamic again these girls are hurting and they're hurting they're turning to sex as a way right. of trying to heal that hurt mm-hmm. and they feel that the moment is over with and they're pregnant and the guy's gone now she's really hurt because then now where's baby daddy now i've got to find him take him to court so i can get some money then there's another hurt that goes with that because you can't find him why because he's down the street with somebody else maybe your girlfriend yeah. and doing the same thing all over again <laughs> so the hurt is still existing yeah and if we don't help educate them and re-educate because many of our young people don't even have a simple education as far as common sense Oh. See, common sense isn't so common, is it? <laughs> so, so really, common sense has become nonsense. Oh, and we like need that. to look at it, how yeah. we deal with that. How do we change the dynamics from this hurting to get them to heal? And the only way that's going to take, one of the ways it's going uh, to happen is us taking time to sit down. That's why this podcast, because we want it to be aired out. We want people to see and to hear and hear from people such as yourself and other guests we have on keeping it real about what's going on. Mm -hmm. If you want to change it, it's going to start with the mindset. 
Right. Yeah. The Bible says, be transformed by the renewing of, of your, your mind. mind. That's right. That you may prove what is the good, acceptable, mm-hmm. and perfect will of God. So we have to have a new mind. And that new mindset is only going to take place by someone saying, hey, your mind is a little messed up. You, it's skewed. You're not thinking properly. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about this thing. Even though they may reject the teaching immediate, at the, mm-hmm. the onset, mm-hmm. if we plant the seed, at least plant, plant the, the seed. seed. But sometimes the seed doesn't fall on fertile soil. Absolutely. You but know. we have to, again. It's to tempt it. And, and yeah. you know what? God didn't tell us that we need to check the ground it falls right. into. That's he simply true. says, plant the seed. Yeah. You put the seed out there. Yes. How it grows, when it grows, or where it grows, that's on God. He said one plants, another waters, only mm-hmm. he can give the increase. See, what we tend to do, we like to plant where we want to plant to see what we want to see. Because <laughs> we say, I plant the seed, so I want to, hmm. It hasn't grown yet, but I'm constantly watching the seed. Mm-hmm. But you still have another. Ba- you still have a bag of seeds. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you focus on that one seed. When you have a bag of seeds that need to be planted, mm-hmm. you plant the thousand seeds, and maybe ten percent of those may grow, fall in the right kind mm-hmm. of ground. But at least if you plant the seeds, you will get a result. Yes. And what we are not getting is the kind of result we expect because we're not doing what we are expected to do from God's perspective. Mm-hmm. We want to do it when we want to do it. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of hurt going on around us. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of our children incarcerated. Right. They're in, in, in jails. Mm-hmm. They're in juvenile detention centers. And they're mm-hmm. simply saying, hey, I wouldn't have been here, possibly not been here, if someone would have been there for me but to at least talk to you me. You know what, though? Even with that, you said it's a lot of car- incarcerated. Was to, we are incarcerated with even no bars or Absolutely. walls around. We are incarcerated in our mind. We are incarcerated within our spirit. So first we have to be getting break out of those deals or have the key or someone to help unlock that deal so we can stop being in prison within our own selves, you know. Then everything, as I say, I, I just I just have to keep continually going back to the spirit. The spirit, how you feel about yourself resonates with how you treat others. You know, and if you and if it doesn't start there, you always if you are, um, if you are broken, unhappy and bleeding, that's going to fall on people that didn't even do the stabbing or the hurting to you. It's going to fall on them as well. They become the residual yes, effect because yes. of it. So we have to definitely, to me, from my, you know, from my mindset and thinking, we have to start there. Because I can tell you from uh, experience, having a broken spirit, is it, it, it will lead your mind to do all types of things, to think all types of things. And mine wasn't so much as lashing out as others as more so hurting myself. You see, that's an even greater danger at times yes. because it's but, not what they see, it's right. what you're holding in right. that's and volatile. see, I didn't want, because I thought that, uh, you know, I didn't want people to see or to mm-hmm. know. And But you know what? I have a Father in Heaven mm. that is so good and never let me go. And I cursed him a lot. I left him. I'm like, you not, you not, you know. I said all types of things. But out of all of that that I went through, that journey, it still brought me back to him. And he still loved me. So that meant such a great deal to me. Because I have such uh, testimonies that people wouldn't even, they were like, that you did. What happened to you? Yes. So I'm a walking testimony because I shouldn't even be here. I shouldn't even be sitting in this seat talking to you. But I have a father in heaven that said, I got a purpose for you. I got something for you to get out. You are a witness. I'm going to use you as a vessel to help somebody else try to come up out of the situation where the day in. And this is how I want you to do it. And this is where I'm going to put you to make you start doing my will. And I have said I only I, and I have cursed him so much about even being there. And then every day is something that he shows me. This is why you here. This is why I got you here. I didn't say it was going easy. He said that I see. I there's going to always be trials and tribulations. I told you that I will never leave you, mm-hmm. nor would I forsake you. Mm-hmm. Now it's going to be stuff that happens, and it's stuff that happens. Well, you know what? Love, but he has prepared me for this battle. Absolutely. Love is not real love until it's love. Yeah. When we understand what real love is, we don't mistake it for anything else. Mm-hmm. When We say, well, I understand what love is. No. Mm-hmm. Because once you understand it, first, God is love. Mm-hmm. And when I understand who God is and my relationship to him, 
and all the stuff I did opposing him. Mm -hmm. And then when he, and I understand he's embraced me, mm -hmm. then I, and that embraces encompasses everything. Mm -hmm. I won't get out of that embrace. Right. I know that. So when we understand that, and again, as going back to what we we're saying earlier throughout the program, there are young people and older people. They need lights. Yes. They need to see lights. Even as we get older, yes. we need to see lights because I've heard people, especially older people, you know, they stuck in their ways. They say, yeah, I'm right. in, I'm stuck in my ways. Right. If you're stuck in your ways, something's wrong because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and life. So any way you need to be stuck in, it should be his way, mm -hmm. not my way. Mm -hmm. So when I get the boasting about my way, mm -hmm. that means I'm doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. And if I'm stuck and simply say, this is the way I am. No, the Bible says we need to transform our minds. That's mm -hmm. an ongoing process, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. This is not mm -hmm. something that just happened the moment we say, I accepted Christ as my Savior. Now I'm mm -hmm. in, in Christ and he's in me. And okay, I don't have to do anything now, but wait on him. Mm -hmm. No, while you're waiting, you're working. Yes. Yes. There are things that need to be done. Go right ahead. No, no. I was just saying while I'm listening to everything, I I feel that we need to break the generational curses. Mm -hmm. You know, I hear all the time that this is what was done to me. Mm -hmm. I grew up. Mm -hmm. All right. So mm -hmm. I'm doing the same to mm -hmm. you. And, and I feel that's wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, even in my own household, my father and mother, when they were raised, they were spanked, or sure you say whooped, mm -hmm. <laughs> whooped to beat. That's just the way it was. Mm -hmm. And my father had said when he had children, he would never do that to his children. We were never spanked. You know, why? I can say I, I just had a birthday this Saturday and turned 66. I have never had a, had a spanking. Mm -hmm. We grew up to be good citizens. We grew up to be mm -hmm. productive in our community, but we were not spanked or beat. And no one can seem to understand that. I can be in a room with 20 people and everybody, yeah, I got beat, I got beat, I got beat. I says, well, I wasn't. And they'll look at me like, like I'm a crazy because mm -hmm. my parents and them chose to break that, that curse. Mm -hmm. They knew what it was for them to get beat. And they still grew up <laughs> to be a certain adults, but they didn't want to put that hurt, you know, on us. Now, they put the fear of God in us. <laughs> And we knew they like they said, I brought you here, I'll take you out. Mm -hmm. But putting that in us as a young person, we, they had no more problems out of us. So all I'm just saying is that for me, a lot of times the way people were raised up, you don't have to continue doing that mm -hmm. to the next generation. Because what you beating them, all you're doing is teaching them to beat, you know, beat someone else. And I think that would help some of the healing if you stop well, at least you one know, one part of that, you know, for the next next generation. I, I agree. And some children I, who may need it. Now, yeah, well, see, that's I, what I, 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 I wanted I, to make sure we no, walked no, down I, that I, path I, too. I, 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 had a, I had my youngest sister. Now I would I look at them as like she needs a beat. You know? There, there but, are some kids you you but, don't need but, to. But they were not able, to, and so in order for them not, to, they they wouldn't deal with that. I dealt with it. Okay. You know, and I didn't spank her, but I was able to, you know, put her in a certain mindset. But all I'm just saying is we need to as and, and I'll just break it down as to black people mm -hmm. or other people. We need to learn that there's other ways to doing things. You know, what was done to us, we need to realize and think about if it hurt us, let's not continue hurting others the way we were hurt. OK, and I agree. And I just I'm so pleased you. You may mention the fact that there are some kids out there who need to have that little butt swept in there. Because there's some out there that's, man, they, uh, they, they, they don't even mind. I'm like, oh, boy, if you were with me. But, but see, again, it's a, here's the thing. Brought them to that yeah, that's what uh, yes. we have to look at. We have mm -hmm. to look at some variations of that. Mm -hmm. And it's discipline. There are various ways of discipline. Mm -hmm. And it's always not necessarily you have to spank someone's butt. Mm -hmm. uh, I know I had that. But it didn't make me grow up being a murderer, a robber, a rapist. And there are children who didn't have that, and they're murderers, robbers, and rapers. Mm -hmm. So it, we have to look at that dynamic, that dynamic. And it comes back down to what, Marilyn, you were mentioning uh, on, set, on the onset, too, is that mindset. Mm -hmm. Because you can have a, a mindset. You have both parents in the home, mm -hmm. finances in the home, mm -hmm. in the suburbs, and mm -hmm. come out to be a murderer. Mm -hmm. You can live in what they call the ghetto mm -hmm. and have low income right. and become the mayor of the city of Cleveland. Right. Mm -hmm. So, again, it doesn't matter where you come from. It's the mindset that you mm -hmm. have where you're at. Mm -hmm. 
So when we look at discipline and people are hurting, there's various types of hurts Mm -hmm. and there are various ways of dealing with that hurt. And we have to explore that hurt. What's causing that? There's a causation that we don't, we always see the end result, but we don't know what caused that. And so what we need to do, especially as adults and as older people, Learn to reverse engineer things. Mm-hmm. Let's take it back and see what mm-hmm. possibly caused those things mm-hmm. to happen. Right. Mm-hmm. And right. and we'll be surprised most times what why that child was doing what they're doing. Traumatized. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Trauma is a big thing. Um, mm-hmm. Diane and I had the uh, opportunity uh, one summer before the COVID hit to go to these sessions at the Case Mandel School mm-hmm. of Medicine where we met a do- Dr. King. One of them came to do my event around trauma and food. That was my event thing, basically. Based on, but uh, trauma, and we realize that these people have been traumatized. You know, when you talk about, especially children, and that's why I pay so much close attention to the kids, mm-hmm. is because I watch these kids how they talk to each other, how their parents talk to them, how something happens. They they're around gun violence guns all day long, just all kind of stuff. And so people say, oh, yeah, they're kids, they're resilient, they'll get over it. They haven't gotten over it, mm-hmm. they buried it. Yeah. So deep so that when they become adults, you want to say, oh, my baby, oh, well, not my baby, my baby didn't do it, because mm-hmm. something has resurfaced. Exactly, and triggered play, And triggered this mm-hmm. trauma that you mm-hmm. thought, this baby, oh, they over that, they they gotten past that. They've buried it so they can move on. Exactly. They buried that hurt and covered it up so deeply that you, and so when you, you just said, we have to find out, what cause, what places a person in it? You know, don't, you know, walk a mile in somebody's shoes. It's uncomfortable, isn't it? Especially if it doesn't fit your foot. Before, it's a thin line between opinion and judgment. I'm, you know, people often, you know, you have to be very, very careful because mm-hmm. we as a people sometimes, uh, easy to judge somebody. Oh, they sure look good. And we all do it just automatically sometimes. But you don't know what that person went through and right. how they feeling and what brought them to this point before you start to... And, and, and society has stigma, stigmatized so many things that we make people feel bad. We make people feel unworthy. Uh, if, if public housing, for example, I've done a lot of research as a researcher in public housing. So society made it feel like, oh, they they, they they are in that situation just because they didn't get out here and work hard or just because of mm-hmm. what opportunities were open for them. What availability, what was there that they that you had that they didn't have? And and, and to for somebody, oh, they need to pull their self up by the bootstraps. It's hard when you ain't got no boots on. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know what? I don't want to cut you off, but we're down the last three minutes of the program. Okay. So we come down to that point. So we'll give you guys the last word. Uh, Ms. Diana, will you have the last word before we leave the air? What do you have to share with the viewing audience? Oh, what I have to share is that You know, we each have to work on ourselves. You know, a lot of times, um, you know, there's things that we're dealing with. Only we know what our issues are. You know, we know what what's going on with us. And sometimes we have to get more deep into ourselves and figure out what the situation is and what we can do. I mean, it could be faith based. um, You know, it could be uh, reading, you know, books going to classes, whatever, but I think we need to work on ourselves as an individual. And I I personally um, have things that I'm working on, and and it it helps. Sometimes we need to broaden ourselves out of our environment and see things for what they are. All right, Miss Marilyn, what last words? I I couldn't just say it any better. We just need to really re-examine ourselves before we can reach out and help anybody Mm -hmm. else. As I said earlier, the man in the mirror. Let's take a look at our own selves, Mm -hmm. uh, as hard as it might be sometimes. But once we start fixing ourselves, we find it so much easier to reach out to somebody else. Mm -hmm. If we do that, if we look at this and simply say, you know what? Those who are hurting can receive healing if they see some of us our healing as well. They're looking for that example. So with that, we thank everybody for joining us on KZ Radio TV, another week of Unlocking the Power of You. Look forward to seeing every one of you again next week. And with that, we say see you later. Thank you.